Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering, live from Autodesk Accelerate 2019. My name is James. You got Luke. Luke, we're joined today with, by Stephanie Chrisman, PLM analyst, as well as Chris Pasternak, manager of engineering systems. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Very impressive titles, by the way. So you make, those up. You make so, them up. That's what I do as well. So literally, right before we did this, I asked him what it was, and he was like, "Let me think about that." Yeah, for a minute. we had to think about it before we get into what it is you do and what those impressive titles mean. We have a little bit of a game for an icebreaker to uh, figure out if you're more of a James or if you're more of a Luke. A lot of our listeners say that we're like polar opposites. You know, he's you know ebony, I'm ivory. He's tomato, I'm tomato, and and it's I don't think we're that different. All right. But our listeners do. So let's hear it. Let's start off, and we're going to keep these all relatively tech-related. What do you like more, or which would you prefer, 3D printing or CNC machining? 3D printing. Okay. 3D printing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's a James so far. Go. Next one is uh, pick a CAD tool, Inventor or Fusion 360. I love Inventor. I'm an Inventor user. Whoa, you can't skew it like that. Yeah. Which one do you like better? Ooh, that's a tough one. I'm more of an NX guy. Oh, okay. That but was not the right her, answer. <laughs> her, her ball. Yeah. And I've got another one. I'm a SolidWorks person. Oh. Yeah. I was well, waiting for that answer, we'll too. We'll edit this in post. Yeah, and clip that one. <laughs> I, 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 I kid. Okay, so we got to take if that we're question out. Do simulation, FEA or CFD? My background's more FEA, so FEA. Okay. FEA. Okay. Wow, this is all yeah. James all James, all day. Uh, energy of the future, is it solar or wind? Solar. Solar. Just saying. One more. Wings or tacos? Wings. Tacos. <sighs> okay. I'll split you, there. You, yes, I'll I think, split there. I think either way... You're both in Camp James, which I'm a big fan of. Thank you. All right, so moving on. <laughs> so, uh, Asensia, uh, give us a, a sense of, no pun intended there. Uh, Asensia, give us a sense of the, the types of things that your company does. I know you're involved in healthcare, but what exactly uh, are you involved with, and how do your individual roles impact that at your company? So, we make diabetic meters and test strips to test your blood sugar. Okay, so the um, stuff you see people... Yeah. Stick and fingers, Stick that your finger, sort of stuff. Get a little blood sample, okay. test your finger. We're actually the company that invented the technology back in the 40s, oh, I wow. think. Yep. And it's evolved through multiple names. Um, and I think it was Ames, Miles Laboratories owned okay. us for a while. Bear owned us until a couple of years ago, and they, hmm. okay. they sold us off as an individual company. Okay, okay. And what exactly, from a engineering uh, perspective, do you folks do for Essentia? Like your day-to-day -day jobs there. Um, the big thing we do is we control the software and processes used for engineering changes, for okay. CAD work, for um, our artwork. Okay. Those kinds of things. So I saw Stephanie, your PLM analyst. Yes. James is not really good at most things, and I don't know if he could spell PLM if you gave him the P and the M. Uh, what exactly does a PLM analysts do again job titles for just <laughs> so i do the day-to-day -day, the administration okay um, answering questions user support but then also rolling out developing and rolling out new functionality okay so this is basically installations of whatever that particular profile is for end users is that it's web-based okay so everybody has access to limited degrees to our engineering change workspace okay and we're building new stuff we're okay. supporting just other business process okay. and don't let her fool you she builds all of our really cool stuff um, not just engineering change stuff but then other stuff people want to track things want to to get live reports those kinds of things she builds all that stuff too okay very cool so very cool are not words i typically associate with plm i'm going to be honest now i know autodesk will be mad at me for saying that <laughs> but tell me why is plm cool what does it do for everyone why is it so necessary it gets rid of pieces of paper Yes. That you have That's, to fill out yes. and send around and get signed that mysteriously get lost, get lost. In, in the <laughs> shuffle. Okay. Um, it makes it all electronic. Anybody can access it. You, it can be seen by anybody who needs to see it. Mm -hmm. If someone gets hit by a bus, we actually had a guy get hit by a bus a few years ago. Wow. I was out of work for six months. Somebody could pick up what he was doing and, and work on it instead of shuffling through for a piece of paper or probably starting over. Yep. And then beyond that, what, we've, what we're able to do with Fusion specifically is move that beyond just engineering changes. 
So how, we're how able so? to support. Everybody looks at it as just we do engineering changes. Um, the tool that we use is is flexible enough that we can build stuff to support whatever workflow. Okay. So something that's just email driven. I, I, I need to request something like a SKU. Okay. We've got a process for that. You email the guy that does it and it would be a back and forth. You might get the right information. You might not. We put all of that in Fusion. He gets the request the first time with all the right information because they're required fields. Notifications go back and forth, and all of that is in one place rather than attached to a half a dozen emails. So it's super customizable for, for your needs. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. I like that. Yeah. yeah. One of the things we were just discussing at lunch was building a, a workspace where someone can request catered in lunches. So that, that you know, if I, I'm sponsoring a lunch I can request a catered in lunch the admin gets all the information and she can can process the order or if she's not available one of the other admins in the, the business would be able to see it and do it I don't know about you but I feel like we need to start positioning this software in a different fashion you <laughs> yeah. say that and all yeah. of a sudden I perk up like all right PLM this is the way to go yeah I, I think what I, I know when I think of so I, I'm I'm a data management I'm more of a DM kind of person that's my background I've used vault a ton and I, I think that um I think that PLM is just like super vault. Like it's it's just taking what I'm already doing and doing it better. But it sounds like it's it's totally different than data management. Um, if you had to explain the differences, if you had like if if you're in front of a customer or in front of your boss and you have to say what's the difference between <laughs> let's try that and you have to say what's the difference between traditional just data management managing data and what PLM is. What would you say that difference is? I think it depends on the tool, but go ahead. I, I think the big thing is data management, it does that. It controls documents you can do with the data management side, but anything with a workflow or a process, you can bring into the system. Right. So if you've got any, any type of piece of paper that needs to be signed or needs to go to multiple people, you can bring it in as opposed to having it in an outside storage uh, software. Okay. Or you know stuff you do in Excel, you can bring that in instead of having an Excel spreadsheet. Now you've got it someplace that's accessible by everyone. And I think that's the difference. A lot of people just assume that it is just for engineering changes. And at least with Fusion, we're able to do so much more than that. Engineering changes and lunch orders. And lunch exactly. Orders. I like it. All right. So changing it up a little bit, you're here at Accelerate 2019. What was it about Accelerate that made you want to show up here at Steelcase? So I think for us, this was the more Fusion focused. Okay. And that is what we use. Um, and then we were asked if we wanted to speak. Okay. So here we are. Hey, so here we are. <laughs> yeah. I like it. So uh, the, the next question is, um, I understand Fusion, you know, where it is right now and how PLM has changed the process. If, if you had to kind of look in your crystal ball of, you know, where it's going to go in the future, uh, where you'd like it to maybe go into the future, maybe there's some shortcomings or things that it doesn't do right now. What do you think those those things would be or, you know, what would be the, the best possible outcome in two, three, five years for, for currently what you're using to become? I think one of the big things is more integration. And I know we had a discussion after our talk this morning with um, someone from Autodesk, and that's something that is being worked on, is bringing in bills of material, having all of that integrated into the system instead of manually putting it, in, putting it into Fusion like we do right now. Okay. And I think for me, it would be, um, I came from an ERP background and a lot of database administration, and to have that kind of granular access, to be, it, just for report writing okay. to the database to actually get to the, the, the data and maybe write some views as opposed to some of the reporting limitations. There aren't many, but they do exist. Okay, okay. So you, you mentioned your background, and I, I was I totally creeped on everybody's LinkedIn profile <laughs> before this. And... You have a really weird background, and, and, and it's a little judgy. It's on LinkedIn. <laughs> well, no, it, yeah, it's yeah, it's and so I, I saw welding, I saw yes. IT. You just mentioned yes. ERP yes. management, PLM. If you had to pick, I know your boss is here, so you got to kind of watch. It has to be the current <laughs> job, but, I need, I need but to plug my ears. Other, <laughs> other than your current role, what has been your coming through the ranks and all the different things you've done, what's been your favorite thing you've done? Um, the ERP portion. Okay. Um, Why this so? Is, this is similar, uh, but again, we were more in depth. Okay. There was more granular control over what we were doing. Um, with 
just a more limited tool set. Okay. Right? ERP is kind of ERP and there you can do some with it, but with Fusion we don't have right? it's whatever we decide we want to create okay. to a great degree. But yeah, the ERP part was was and then it was of course it was database database administration hand in hand. Okay. Okay. So, so that was a lot of fun. I'm going to ask you the same question, Chris, but I, I didn't creep on your LinkedIn profile because we were surprised when you showed up here. Um, your your background, whatever it happens to be, um, what do you say your favorite, other than current, because everybody always has to say that, what would you say your favorite career has been or portion of your career? Was it early days, middle, whenever you were doing whatever? What's what's it been? I'd, I'd say the mid days. I came out of the first half of my career was in automotive. Okay. And in automotive, I did a lot of, the second half of my automotive career was fuel systems, and we did a lot of the high performance vehicles for Ford, GM, and Chrysler. Oh, so I got to play with the that's cool. you know early two thousands. Cool. They had Ford had the Ford GT yeah. out. I got to go test drive some of those at their facility and have fun with those cars and check out my fuel system. This is like that the retro fun. looking one, right? Yeah, I just saw yeah some... the one that's like four hundred grand now. I the, yeah. I just saw it on huh. the go flog on them. There there was an auction, uh, an auto auction last night when I turned on the TV it just happened to be and the Ford GT sold for six hundred and like eighty four thousand wow. dollars. Had like ten thousand miles on it, one owner. Yeah. Uh, it was blue, had the clear window in the back so you could like yeah, see the motor. You could see the motor. It was really the, cool. The fuel system That's in that scary. car is one I designed years ago. And wow. It, the the Shelby Cobras that are out, I designed okay. fuel systems in those. So that was fun. I got to go play with a lot of really fun toys. What uh, what software were you using to design that with? Is that... Uh, I, what, I, I, we're, we're open here, James. The, it doesn't have to be one of ours. The, that was Ideas, okay. which at the time was owned by SDRC. Now it's part of the NX okay. family. Were you part of the design of my high-performance Ford Escape? <laughs> yes, actually, that fuel system yeah. is, <laughs> is probably one of mine as well. Okay, <laughs> well, very good. Thanks a lot they for that. They weren't the fun ones, but, you know. So, back to PLM a little bit and Fusion Lifecycle. How long have you been implementing this as part of your workflow? And we might have touched on this a bit. And what's the biggest thing that it's doing for you now? Time savings, the best improvement because of it other than lunch orders we are this is our third year using fusion lifecycle okay and right now we're doing a, a project to look at timeline reductions when we went through that project one of the things that we saw was we went from our old process that took eight weeks from the time we got artwork until we got it released now we're at eight days wow wow yeah so yeah, that, that's wow. been the biggest gain is, is time. And then of course, time is money. So it's a lot of cost savings. So I, wow. I, 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 I had, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say I don't believe you, but, <laughs> I, but g- give me, give me the, give me like the, the, the one minute, yeah, how, how you go from. How do you from, save seven weeks or six at least? We, we got, we looked at the whole process. We had a very good, very robust process in the old software we used, but it was much more cumbersome. Okay. So as we would go through there, we had 28 tasks that we had to do. When we went, moved into Fusion, we could combine some of those tasks. Some of them were automatically tracked through the system, so we didn't have to have separate tasks. We cut that down to 14 tasks. Mm-hmm. So instantly, we cut that in half. We looked at the approval process. Before, we had to have six approvers. We looked at what needed to be done because of the way the system tracks things. We only needed three approvers, so we got to cut half the approval cycle out. So we got to go just chunk big pieces out because the system is much more flexible. Okay, I, I believe you now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't believe it either when it first happened. Like, That's amazing. That? Mm-hmm. And now we're stealing that quote. We're just going to plaster that yeah, everywhere. That's, that's, all right. that's right. all right. So I have, we'll call it a hypothetical. Hypothetical. Hypothetically, let's say I have a cat. And let's say his name is Sam. Okay? Now, you're in diabetic care. Do you make all of the testing supplies and the strips and things like that? Yes? Do yes. you make the ones for cats and dogs? I honestly don't know if our stuff is. I'm not sure. Rated for pets. It would or not. have to be different because of like body weight and size there, and sh- everything, right? Well, the the way it does the test is is um, like if you're you in the U S. It's uh, what millimole per deciliter? No, sorry, milligram per deciliter. Deciliter. So it, it's all how much sugar is in the blood. It, so it doesn't have anything to do with size or anything else. Again, I'm not really sure if ours are rated, veterinary rated or not. I'm you're not sure you're, you're mad that. because I, I know what he's going to say. We talked about well, this. No, I feel <laughs> like I should be able to use human strips then, but I know I know it's different somehow. I don't know why. I'm not that smart. But I do want to know why I have to use people insulin on my big fat cat and why it's so expensive. I need pet insurance. <laughs> Is your cat 
different and not able to use cat insulin? I, I'm told that it's that's just what you do. You give cats people insulin. Who Never knew? knew that. I think there is a different kind. I Actually, my mom Ooh. had a diabetic cat, and they put that one on a different insulin. Is it cheaper? I don't think so. Uh, well, then it doesn't solve you, my you, problem. You could just be a more responsible pet owner <laughs> and maybe like not feed your cat the way you feed your cat and maybe take it out for a walk every now and then. Do you take cats for walks? I've seen people do it. Oh, put a harness on your cat. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> really? <laughs> Get out the video camera. She does Yes. Do you it. walk a cat? No, I put a harness on the cat. <laughs> and, and then just laugh. And the cat runs around. <laughs> and, it was. It's priceless. Okay. There's, okay. there's of course, video of cats on the internet doing this because video of cats. But yeah. Okay. I feel like this has really taken a turn for the better. But it has uh, for sure. I think I'm going to stop with any questions. Luke, do you have anything else to follow up with? No. I, I just, uh, if you had to uh, give advice to someone thinking about accelerate next year, so we use a lot of this content to, to get people excited about. Uh, you know, PLM and fusion and the, the future of how we make things. And if you had to give advice to someone that's, that's on the fence, maybe next year thinking about attending Accelerate, what advice would you give them? I would say get out here, get to network and meet the people that are doing the things beyond what you know that the system can do. Exactly. That's where you're going to come up with the ideas that are going to help you save a lot of money in your company, save a lot of time, is find out the oddball things like scheduling lunches Yeah. that other people are doing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I, I think, I think sometimes as a as an organization, we think we can answer all the questions. But I think what happens is when we get our customers together, you guys help answer each other's questions. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things that you get out of this event. You know, like when I look at the when I look at the agenda, there's a ton of networking. I'm like, why is there so much networking? And why is there just not classes? And then when you hear the conversations happening uh from you know one company to another company where that would never happen in any other circumstance other than at an event like this so that's that's great to know i i appreciate that yeah all right well we don't want to take up any more of your time but thank you both for joining us here today uh, hopefully you get some more out of the networking that's going on for the rest of accelerate and for any of you who are listening uh remember come to the next accelerate accelerate event in 2020 thanks thank you thank you